over guys everything's going to zero crypto is over i'm sorry guys <laughs> i'm just kidding welcome to the crypto logic channel my name is john and my mission here in this channel is to make crypto as logical as possible so please hit the like button to help this video out subscribe to the channel to stay and hit the notification bell to stay notified whenever a new video drops you guys like that intro or my little false uh acting skills right there nah i'm just kidding uh, happy Friday. Um, on Fridays is usually when I want to do um, these series called Crypto Discussions. And basically, we just talk about certain protocols, certain projects, tokens, um, the market. And today, I feel like it's the best time to talk about the market and go over some things that I've been feeling in my chest, like, or, you know, in, within me. And a comment that I read where, you know, kind of bothered me, but, you know, I'm going to. I'm going to defend myself a little bit, but um, but without being said, welcome to the channel. Today's going to be a great episode, um, great video, and I'm going to showcase basically some tokens you guys need to look at, um, not financial advice, that tokens that I'm looking at and I suggest you guys look at, not financial advice again, <coughs> um, why I'm looking at them and then how you guys can use the knowledge and the insight that I'm using for your own personal research, right? So with that being said, let's just dive into the market today. So it happened last night and you guys who are crypto investors, you guys know that um, there was a big, another quote unquote flash crash, right? And I did some research and I think I know the reason why. This may not be the only reason why, but I think it's one of the biggest reasons why the market um, tanked. So we're sitting at $1.81 trillion. That's $20 billion, like $25 billion. <clears throat> That just left the market since yesterday. Since yesterday's video, that's insane. That's that's a that's a crash. That's a big crash. We're down eleven percent over the last day. Um, being a crypto investor is not for the weak. So whoever is asking you about crypto, whoever is asking you to invest into crypto, right? If they're not asking you what's good to buy during this time, this is this is when you start realizing. Oh, I've been wasting valuable information time talking to these people when everything was green so it, if no one's hitting you up right now asking you hey what's a good thing to buy right now what, what, what should i be looking at and they're and they're not even talking to you about crypto at all right now right now like in this moment when everything is crashing when everything is red everything is down and they're not asking you about um What's going on? Why is the market like this? What's good? What's a good buy? What's a good pickup? Don't waste your time when the market's green. I'm telling you guys that right now. This is personal advice. All right. Don't waste your time talking to these people about crypto. If they're not asking you right now about anything going on in the crypto space and, and, and asking you what's a good buy, what's a good thing, because this is the best time to buy, especially if you are new to crypto or if you do not have been ever been into crypto. <clears throat> this is the best time to increase your positions, add to your uh, add projects to your positions and start researching new projects that are probably going to be a minimum 11 percent on average below their all time high, if not 30, 40, 50, 60 percent below their all time high. OK, so once again, if no one's bugging you about the space, asking you all these questions they were asking you when everything was green. Do not waste your time when the market goes back up. Just don't waste your time. Just don't even waste your time. Focus on you and focus on the people that are caring and asking when the market is red. Because this is the best time to buy, all right? I need to get that out the way. So so let's just dive into the market. Bitcoin finally fell below that 40K. Finally fell below that 39K. Now people are wondering if it's going to go down to 36, right? 36, 35. <clears throat> to in the 20s range, right? We don't know. I think Bitcoin's going to catch itself. Um, and stay around this place. I think this is the worst of the worst. We have to see tomorrow, tonight, Friday night, and see what's going on, how the rest of the world reacts to what happened, right? Um, Ethereum is below 3K. Binance is still over 400, but below 450. Cardano is $1.20, but it's been there. Cardano had his nice little pump. Nothing big for Cardano. It's already been there before this crash. Solana is still over 100, still win, in my opinion. Um, XRP below 70 cents. Crazy. We're still in that wait and see approach for XRP, though. 
Okay, there's some bullish news for XRP. Um, I think I went over it quickly um, yesterday in, in yesterday's video. Basically, New York listed XRP as one of the 14 currencies that's available for custody in New York. So that's big news for them, but they're still in that wait-and-see approach. Luna still $71, still up from where it was last year, still solid. Polkadot still st still in over 20 bucks. Um, Avalanche still doing well. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to this and look at all the cryptos that I think you guys should take a look at, not financial advice, but the market overall has dumped. Bitcoin dominance, as like I said previously, is rising, which is not good because that means alts are dramatically dipping. As alts dip, Bitcoin's dominance rises because Bitcoin has so much capital in the market, in the crypto space, right? It's the biggest market cap. So as the Bitcoin dominance goes up, that means that alts are losing their capital, right? Their market caps are going down. So we want a perfect space where it's parallel, but that's not going to happen because Bitcoin is the biggest market cap project, token, whatever you want to call it. And as you see here, it's rising. It's at 40.4%. And um, it's not a it's not a bad sign. It's not a good sign. It's just not a it's not a bullish sign for if you're alt coin investor, right? Obviously, if you just don't if you're not a Bitcoin maxi, you're an alt coin investor. So primarily, it's not Bitcoin taking the market down with it. That that narrative I feel like is done. It's just the alts overall, or it's just crypto in general. And I'll explain why. So let's. I was on Twitter last night, and Bloomberg Crypto, which is amazing. Right. Bloomberg usually does like business news, finance news and everything like that. Right. They have they have a crypto Twitter page. So now Bloomberg is talking about crypto. And this is why I, at the end of the day, I'm not bearish at all. I'm not bull. I'm forever bullish. Shout out to Crypto Mason. Honey Badger. Right. That's what he said. I'm forever bullish. I'm bullish for the entire crypto space as a whole moving forward. So seeing things like this where it's literally at crypto, that's their name at crypto, Bloomberg Crypto. They have a crypto section. So crypto is starting to become everywhere, right? It's freaking huge news. So this is what they tweeted out um, last night or yesterday. You might not be able to use and create crypto in Russia soon. The country's central bank is calling for a blanket ban on crypto. Here are the details on the proposed ban. The blanket ban prohibits the use and creation of all crypto domestically in one of the world's biggest crypto mining nations now that's key right there biggest crypto mining nations one of the biggest nations that have that has crypto mining is getting is banning crypto that's like going to mcdonald's and asking for burgers and they said oh we don't sell burgers anymore like what are you like what are you gonna do right <laughs> You go to McDonald's and you want to buy a double cheeseburger. Like, oh, we don't sell burgers anymore. We don't have meat patties anymore. We just sell French fries and chicken nuggets. Like, what would you do? Like, that's that's what's happening. So it says, why? Bank officials worry about the dangers posed to Russia's financial system and environment. Sources say, this is the key thing that I've found. Sources say more than $92 billion worth of assets, digital assets, are held in about 17 million crypto wallets in Russia. They also say the ban reflects the position of Russia's powerful security service and prevent funds from going to the opposition. <clears throat> so these type of countries that have one person in charge and they can do things like this. China is one of them. Um, basically, this is a stupid excuse. They're worried about uh, this affecting their security system in, in the monetary system and then having money. From Russia or anybody who's too, who's against Russia, right, that lives in Russia, can send money outside of Russia using crypto to to the enemies, and this has a lot to do with political stuff. Um, our country and other countries putting sanctions on Russia and warning them not to do this, not to invade this, and I think this is a retaliation of them going, well, we don't want any one of our people sending money and back and forth to other countries and stuff, so we're just gonna close ourselves off close ourselves off and i think that um this will affect a lot of people who are against russia like us americans and everything like that because it's just it's just all political theater it's all part of this game right and i have no idea what's going on on that level i'm just saying what i think right so i'm not political i'm not anything like that i'm not trying to get it political i'm not saying any names i'm not saying anything i just think it's just a cat and mouse game it's it's um 
Tom and Jerry, right? Elmer the Fudd and uh, Ra- uh, Rab- the Bugs Bunny, just bickering back and forth, doing things, right? Um, at the end of the day, though, I'm not worried because right here it says, Bitcoin mining is certainly growing faster than whatever it is losing in these announcements, okay? So like I said before, when one light turns off, another light will turn on. You can't shut down the internet. You can't shut down crypto. Okay, one place turns off the light, another place will open up. This is opportunity for places to be. So this is the, one of the biggest nations to do crypto mining. Well, another place can become the bit replace it as the biggest place for crypto mining. Okay, so this is just fear, uncertainty, and doubt. People who live in Russia who are probably weak investors, right? Weak investors. Oh no, I gotta get my money out. I gotta get my money out. They're gonna ban. It. I gotta get my money out. So it's the same thing as KuCoin being banned, and they say, hey, you can't use KuCoin anymore. What are you going to do? If you got all your money's on KuCoin, what are you going to do? You're going to move it out of KuCoin. Are you not? Or are you going to leave it there? That's what's going on, right? People who have their money, who Russians, whoever lives in that area that's getting banned, they're just taking their money out. And some of them probably are holding because, like I said down here, $92 billion worth of digital assets are in wallets. And we lost about $25 billion since yesterday, <clears throat> right? There's still more to go. So you can expect the $92 billion to leave the market space, right? I, I don't think that all of it will leave because I don't think people are – there's a lot of investors that are um, bulletproof, right? They have a bulletproof mindset where, they're, hey, I'm going to hold and see what happens rather than, oh, no. Oh, no. I need my money out. Oh, no. Right? <clears throat> so all this stuff is going to be linked in the description. Here's the here's the article itself. It's a good read. Um, but that's my opinion on as to why the market is crashing. And to me, it's a thank you. Thank you for allowing me to get these prices, get these projects at discounted prices. Thank you, Russia, because China did it a few months ago last year. Right. Um, this is not going to be the the only thing that's going to happen. This is not going to. India did it, too. Right. India's done it. China's done it. And now it's Russia's turn. Um, we got other countries that are going to affect. Those are big countries that have a lot of crypto uh, money. Right. Um, but. This is a very opportunistic moment. If you believe in crypto, if you are a true crypto investor, this ain't for the weak. This is not for the weak. This is not for the weary. You are, especially in the Discord, you got to have a bulletproof mindset where it's like, all right, cool. It slows everything down and allows you to go shopping, allows you to move things around or add more um, to your, your, your current projects, right? And this is why this is the best time to have <coughs> cash parked on the sidelines. Okay. So when you have cash parked on the sidelines of stable coins, <coughs> that allows you to go ahead and purchase and scoop up these discounted prices. So with that being said, now I'm going to go start talking about projects that I think are ones that you guys should definitely take a look at, not financial advice. These are ones I'm definitely taking a look at. There's a lot. I'm not going to go over what they do or anything. I'm just going to go over the pricing and why I think that they're, sh- they're good buys and good pickups, okay? The first one, obviously, is Cadena. I bought in Cadena originally at $3, so this is still double where I initially bought in, okay? So Cadena is one that will be so will do so well this year, in my opinion, by end of the year, right? <clears throat> at 6 bucks, I think it's a solid buy-in because the all-time high is, I think, $28, Yes, twenty eight dollars. We're still a long way from that, and you could, and that it did that last year. Okay, so I think that it can do it again, if not more. So at six dollars, it's still a solid buy. You can wait and see after tonight when the rest of the world wakes up again. <clears throat> but in my opinion, that news about Russia dropped yesterday afternoon, twelve p.m. Pacific time. So knowing that, whenever big news like that drops, usually the crash happens when the rest of the world wakes up, which is in the evening at night for us U.S. citizens, if you're on the U.S., okay, I'm because t- I'm in the U.S., so I'm talking about U.S. citizens. At night is usually when the crash happens. That means that it's probably morning for other countries, okay? So that news broke in the middle of the night of these other countries. So at night, when it, when it became nighttime for them, or nighttime for us, it was morning for them, and that's when they saw the news. So that's usually when the market um, dumps in the evening. It starts dumping for us, and then it gets really bad at night. So I think that this is probably going to be the worst, just maybe bleed a little bit, but this is the worst. Okay, so that's why my thought process is, okay, Cadena's down 18%. I don't see it going down to $4, $3. It's a good pickup. Pull the trigger, right? 
That's how I look at it. Vector space. We refresh it. Same concept. I this is cheaper than when I originally bought vector space. I bought vector space initially at like three thirty to three eighty. Okay, so this is cheaper than when I bought it. I'm definitely picking some up um, today. Uh, on top, on, <coughs> and I'm getting my Thor node too, but that's beside the point. So vector space is at two dollars. All time high of this thing is like nineteen dollars. Okay, so nineteen percent down. <coughs> Don't sit here and wait for it to go down to a dollar. The worst I feel like has already come. Like I said previously. When news comes out and the U.S. or whatever reported during the day, it gets bad for us at night, which happened last night. Because when the news breaks out during the day for us, it's in the middle of the night for those other countries. So when, when those other countries wake up, they see the news while we're going to sleep. That's when the market tanks while we're sleeping. Okay? So I think that the worst has already hit and we're already tumbling down. We'll bleed a little bit. But the worst, like, it's not going to go from 275 down to a dollar. That's another that's another 20% drop. That's not going to happen, you guys. That's not going to happen. It already did. So the worst thing that this thing can probably bleed to is maybe 230 So that's a $0.40 cent difference. You know what I mean? Is it worth it to wait $0.40? Cents? No. Great buy-in. Boom. Quant. Same thing. Quant is one you have to pick up. If you're a crypto investor, everyone knows this. You got to own a couple quant, right? The supply, everything like that. You know what's interesting? Um, their circulating supply is at 12 million, and there's about 2 million. I'm trying to figure out if the other 2 million is like locked up or something like that. I never looked into that. But like I said, 19% down. Don't wait for it to go under $100. Just, just don't. This, it's not. It would have already. Okay, it's already been it's already tanked, right? This is a great pickup at these prices. Great pickup. Best pickup at these prices in a long, long time. In a little while. In a while. It's been a while. Okay. So you guys need to be be aware of that. And that's how I think. I'm not telling you to think like me. I already have some quant. But if I wanted to add more quant, I would pick some up right now. There's no there's no hesitation to pick some up. Because um to oh I'm gonna wait for it to go down at hundred dollars. That logic, you're not don't 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 come at me with that logic. Because I'm giving you the reasoning why the market's tanking. There's no you can't, the charge. You can do anything you want. It's it's gonna bleed. Obviously, it's going to bleed a little bit throughout the rest of the day. But it already had its crash. Okay, now you're just being greedy and being uh, frugal and being cheap. Okay, so Quant is a great pickup. Alliance Block is another great pickup. Alliance Block has been a great pickup for over the past six seven months. All right, everything under anything. For this token, anything under a dollar, in my opinion, is a steal, is a robbery, okay? So we're at 42 cents right now. Great, great, great pickup. It'll bleed a little bit, maybe get to down to like 38 cents or so. That's still like a four cent difference. Like what's the point of waiting for it, right? Great pickup, under 50%, 50 cents. Beautiful pickup. I love Alliance Block. I'm going to be picking some up. Another project that I'm throwing on here is Elf. Um, at 35 cents, I think it's a solid pickup. I can't remember when I bought it last. I think I bought it at 50 cents last year and I sold at like a dollar something. So I doubled my money and I swung trade it. But I think that this has an opportunity to do it again. So at these prices, it's an easy pickup to put if you want to double your easy double. So this is an easy double in my opinion to pick up and then get a good, uh, maybe two X or three X. Okay. For this project. Um, that's another one I want to throw out there. Another one is near protocol. Anything. These are it's falling away from all time high, so I think near protocol is, is a great pickup right now to pick up a couple, a couple hundred bucks, three hundred bucks, whatever, to, to easily double your money or at least get a nice little make a make free money basically, okay. So all time high is twenty bucks, almost a double, right? Not really, three more dollars goes down than yes, but it's close to a double, right? You're gonna make like a, you know what I mean? You're gonna get some good returns on this thing if you bought some right now, like guaranteed in my opinion, not financial advice. So near is one I'm looking at. Another one that I'm very bullish on for the rest of the year or the next few years is Engine. Okay, Engine is a project that I definitely think that people should definitely take a look at. Just add some to your portfolio. It's a, such an easy swing trade in my opinion because you buy Engine, that thing will hit $3 out of nowhere and you make some good money. Just take sell it and then wait for it to go down to $2 again and do it again. Then wait for it to go down to $2 and do it again. It's just like you can have dedicated money just for Engine just to make those plays, just to make that free money constantly. Constantly, constantly, constantly. Um, I think at one ninety ninety one is great. It'll go back up to three bucks again, three dollars again. Super easy, like super easy flip in my opinion. 
Um, all time high is four dollars and eighty five cents, which was two months ago. <clears throat> can definitely hit two fifty. Can definitely hit three bucks. Boom, doubled your money. All right, almost doubled your money. Um, but you're making good profits, good gains. Um, <clears throat> there's so many tokens out there that that you can just go down and just look. Chainlink, Unis, well, not Uniswap, but um, Matic, Polkadot, Phantom. FTX, KCS, H bar is still a little too high for my opinion. Um, I bought in like at nineteen cents. I mean, you can easily buy H bar and then over the got to hold it for a little bit because H bar moves really slow. H bar's price appreciation moves really slow. Um, it goes down fast, but its price appreciation goes really slow because I think we're still ahead of its time. I love H bar. I had so much H bar and I sold it to put it more of it into time. Um, I eventually will get back an H bar, um, but yeah, there's so many projects here that are <laughs> flow. So remember how I say when you look at a token is find the token, look at its all time high, see how far away you are from all time. Are you a minimum a double away, right? This is all time high is forty six bucks. So this is a whew, this is a great pickup for flow. But look how far away you are from the all time high. At least be a, a minimum fifty percent away from the all time high, right? A, a double away. So this is way more than double, obviously. So that's how I look at it. And then how I look at um the bleeding is like, okay, this thing's already down fifteen percent. Is it gonna go down twenty five percent, thirty percent, forty percent? You know what I mean? Is it gonna keep going? I don't think it is because it would have been doing it. It would have been going. You would have been seeing going fourteen, seventeen, eighteen over the next few hours, right? It's not. It's it's gonna. It catches itself and it stays. So that's how I look at these tokens. Look at the supply. Um, massive supply Mo won't move up that fast. Um, you got to like wait for a bullish, 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 bullish market. But when the money gets put back into the market, right? Let's say Russia says, oh, never mind. We're not banning anything. What are people going to do? They're going to put the people that took their money out are going to put their money back in. So... <clears throat> You automatically will get a 15% increase, bam, from this, right? So that's what I'm saying. A lot of these projects, they will crash, <coughs> and then people will eat the dips, which keeps it from free-falling. So that's why I call it bleeding. People will be liquidating themselves, selling themselves, but it'll just be bleeding. It won't be a big crash because the big crash happens already. Okay, it sees you went up 15%. It's bleeding, but look, the price didn't really change. So it went up a little bit. But it bleeds. It doesn't just keep crashing. Okay? So just watch the bleeding and watch as people are buying these projects. Okay? Um, now I'm just ranting about my uh, thought process on, 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 on basically crypto overall. So the last thing I want to talk about before I end this episode or video. I need to stop calling it episodes because these aren't the podcast episodes. This is my, my crypto discussions. The last thing I want to talk about is this uh, comment I got. Shout out to Dan. Um, him saying that I hope that I don't be he hopes that I don't become one of these shillers that shill projects. Basically, what I'm, I want to say to that is I will never become like those people and those people will never be like me. OK, because I, I I understand blockchain technology. I understand economics. I've worked for companies that deal with um, technology and deal with finance and everything like that. I understand that crypto is a is what is needed in our society moving forward. It's needed. It's not a privilege. It's not a luxury. It's needed. It's something that has to be implemented in our monetary system as we move forward because the companies that everyone uses day in and day out are moving toward that direction. So if you want to stay alive, you need to somewhat adopt it in your system, just like a store. If you do not have online shipping, you will not be able to to scale and compete with other things. If you do not have delivery, if you do not have um, being able to pay with digital debit cards, credit cards, if you're a cash only business, you will be losing out on a lot of money. So that's why my mindset is that the crypto space as a whole, in regards of companies, protocols, businesses, this technology will be implemented into every layer of life moving forward. So that's why I already automatically understand from that level of the crypto space. One, 
<clears throat> it's not going anywhere. It's here to stay forever. Forever. Okay? Two, I don't shill projects for you guys to buy and pump my bags. I don't talk about tokens that, oh, I need, I need, you guys need to buy this token. This token's going to be this. It's going to do this. It's going to do this. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't talk, I never, even when, even when it's fundamental tokens, it's always tokens that I actually like and I'm actually invested in or, I'm, or I tell you guys I'm actually going to get into. So the reason why I've been talking about these certain tokens recently, they're DeFi protocols. So what that means is these tokens are not predicated on you or anyone buying or selling to make money off of these. You buy the token for yourself and you create whatever it is that they're promoting, a node, a DAO, whatever, rebases, whatever. And the moment you buy them and you stake them or you create the node, you're automatically going to start making money just by the crypto being being in your possession and you and you and you created the you you involve yourself within the protocol, right? You participated in the protocol. You're automatically rewarded by by it. That has nothing to do with me finding you a token like Flow and saying, hey guys, Flow, go buy it. It doesn't do nothing for me. It doesn't do nothing for you. You're, you're, so having utility means nothing. And I'm a utility investor, but I, I, you guys need to understand this. Having utility means nothing until utility is actually active. So a lot of tokens can come up and say, oh, we do this. This is our, this is our utility. This is what we're trying to do. This is the problem we're trying to solve. It doesn't mean anything until they start, they're solving the problem. That's the reason why Quant has has not been $1,000 yet. Why? Because they say they're going to do this. But are they doing it yet? No. And it's not even, and it's not talking negative on the project. Same thing with HBAR. Same thing with DAG. Same thing with XRP. Right? All these tokens say they're going to do this, say they're going to do that. But are they doing it yet? No. They're working their way towards there. We're still very, very early. Okay? <clears throat> so shilling a project Having me break down a utility project is fine. I'll do that all day. But at the end of the day, it's still speculation because that utility is not active yet. So I can go on and 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 on talking about fundamental tokens and say, this is going to do this. At the end of the day, if that token is not actively doing their utility, it's speculation. And it's, in quote unquote, based on you or me buying and selling the token. And hoping that other people believe that they will be doing what they're saying they're going to do to get the price to increase. A true utility token is a token that you're using it to do things. To be honest, XRP, XLM, Ethereum, Avalanche, obviously Layer 1s, those are all actual tokens that you can have and do things with it. <clears throat> Let's take XLM, for example. If I want to move my money to my MetaMask wallet or to a different exchange, I'm going to use XLM. Why? Because it's faster and cheaper. I'm going to convert my money into XLM. Let's say I have cash or if I have another token, I'm going to convert it to XLM, take that XLM, move it to KuCoin because it's going to take me three, four, three to five seconds and it's going to cost me one cent, roughly. That's utility. That's what XRP is. People who are going to be using XRP do not care about the price. They care about, man, I have $17 million that I need to move over here. They're going to use XRP to move it within four seconds. They don't think like us. They don't think like how we think where we're like, oh, I want XRP at $10. I want XLM at $10. I want this token. This token, please, a YouTuber, please talk about this token. And make, it doesn't, they don't care about that. What is that token going to do for them to make them money? It doesn't, they, don't, they don't care about us buying or selling it. That token needs to have utility. True utility is using the token for what it is. And there's a lot of tokens out there that do that. Okay? So it doesn't mean I'm not talking about fundamental tokens. I'm saying shilling means you're talking about a project that's, oh, buy it. You guys need to buy this token right now before it blows up. That's speculation. I don't do that. I'm doing, I'm, what I'm doing is a logical, practical way right now. And I tell you guys straight up, if you guys want to make a 2x, if you guys want to buy this token and hit all-time high and make some good money to then buy in your favorite projects that you believe in that will do well, like Quant, Happy, etc., right? Buying projects to put into protocols. So what's going on here is the projects I've been talking about are DeFi protocols that allow you to make money irregardless of if someone buys it or not. That protocol will make you money. So I will, I'm, transition, I'm not transitioning, but I'm talking about those projects. And then I'm also, like today talking to you about projects that have in my opinion true utility but you buy that token what are you doing with it 
Are you using that token? No. You're buying that token and you're holding it. So that's what does that mean? What does that mean for you guys? Speculation. You're buying that token and you hold it. And what are you doing? You're just waiting for it to go back up, right? So the DeFi protocols, you buy that token, and what are you doing? You're watching it make you money because it's a node. It's a DAO. You're getting rebases. Those tokens are making you money. That's the reason why I'm putting them on the channel. Uh, I can talk to you about engineer, break it down all day long to make you believe that it's a utility token. Oh, a Alliance Block is going to connect the real world to the crypto and talk about it all day long. But at the end of the day, you as a regular investor, you buy this token, you're just going to sit and hold it in your hands and wait for it to blossom. That's all you're going to do, which is no problem with that. But that's why I wanted to incorporate DeFi projects, and that's my response to Dan, which is why I'm talking about DeFi protocols as well to help make you money while you're holding these tokens. I'm still always going to talk about my favorite projects, utility, because that's what type of investor I am. So I'm sorry if that was a little whoosh, a little ranty, but that's just my thought process. A shout out, shout out to all you guys. Shout out to everyone that watches this, uh, this YouTube channel. Um, shout out to you, Dan. Thank you for that. <clears throat> fire me up you know what i mean it's, this is what's beautiful about the crypto space though because every every investor is different don't copy anybody be you be you in the truest form shape and fashion okay um i think that's all i got for you guys today the crypto space everything is on sale you guys go out there happy hunting happy trading happy buying don't sell at a loss because you're freaking out buy more buy the damn dip um, I think that's all I got to say. Happy Friday. Please have a safe, safe weekend. I will see you guys on Monday. I cannot wait to see how this weekend is going to go. I will have a Thor node. I will have more updates for you guys. And next, I finished my PowerPoint on my tokenomics special video. <clears throat> that explains my thought process on um, basically supply, market cap, and everything like that. It's like a tutorial video. It's like a crypto intro tutorial video that's going to drop um probably monday as well it's gonna be a separate video that's not correlated to the monday's video that's that i do every monday it's just like a video that's gonna be thrown out there for you guys that's gonna be one that you can send to all your friends and people that are, are that are that are actually want to be in crypto real crypto investors so you guys thank you again so much for watching this far if you're watching this far shout out to you guys join the discord we're gonna have some great conversations over the weekend i think and I will see you guys on Monday. Peace. Yeah.